Registered Phenomena Code 022 Object Class Data Yellow Hazard Types Animated Hazard Sapient Hazard Containment Protocols RPC-022 is to accompany Site-026 security throughout their daily duties and should be treated as a member of the security team during this time. RPC-022's pedestal is to be stored in the Site-026 barracks, for use when it is not on duty. RPC-022 possesses Level 0 affiliate clearance, in effect only when it is active and on duty. In addition, RPC-022 is to be interviewed by Site-026 historians twice a week. RPC-022 is a late Roman Empire-era marble statue of an unnamed soldier. It bears no visible damage beyond the wear expected of a statue of its age. Testing and archaeological reports have placed its date of creation around 470 CE, a date supported by the letters the statue arrived with. It is capable of speech, identifying itself as Legatus Augusti Propriatori Lucilis, and expresses strong loyalty to the Authority, which it refers to as the Vanguard of Hercules. Due to this loyalty, it will cooperate with Authority personnel without question. Additionally, RPC-022 is aware of its own anomalous nature. RPC-022, despite being conscious of the amount of time that has passed since its creation, does not appear conscious of the advancement of society. Due to this, it has had a difficult time acclimating to modern societal norms, although this has not affected its efficiency. Note from Dr. Julie Clark, If this thing calls me a handmaiden again, I'm going to lose my… RPC-022 has proven impervious to physical damage and possesses a vast range of motion, agility, and strength despite its composition. Discovery. RPC-022 has been in the possession of the Authority since it was founded, when it was presented to the newly minted Authority by Prince. Upon being presented to the Authority, RPC-022 was in possession of several dated letters, which had been partially transcribed and translated in Addendum 2. Scans of the original Latin letters may be accessed in the Site-026 library. Addendum Most Recent Historian Interview Interview Log 022-056 Interview Log 022-056 Interviewer, Dr. James Montenegro, Site-026 Historian Interviewed, RPC-022 Welcome back, I trust you've had a good day? Ah wait, good historicus, the Vanguard remains mighty. Why, only yesterday my legion wrestled a mighty beast back into its cage, with no casualties no less. It certainly sounds like you had an eventful week, Leggett. Today I wanted to ask you a little bit more about what you witnessed in your early service for the Vanguard. Simply ask, Historicus. If my experience may be of use to the Vanguard, I am all too happy to recount it. I'm glad to hear that. Last time we left off in 473 with you and Florence looking for an anomaly, correct? Ah, Florentia. The land of strong men and beautiful women. I was not there to indulge in the local delights with a track down a man who had led countless Romans to their deaths with his foul magics. Marcus had given me a description of the man, that he had flaxen hair and a scar on his face. But in a place like Florentia, full of soldiers, nearly every face was weary and scarred by battle. So how did you find him? That was a simple manner. Men with power, they cannot resist an indulgence, who, if given the power, would not conceal his faults or augment his strengths. I looked for a perfect face instead. No self-declared god would let himself appear common in a crowd of commoners. So you took advantage of his vanity. Did it work? That it did. I found a man with a face worthy of Cupid in Florentia's finest tavern, buying drink and whores with money he had simply plucked from thin air. It was a simple matter to slide my Pujo into his back where he sat. I see. Thank you for your time, Leggett. You may resume your duties. Ah, way, Historicus. Addendum 2. Transcribed Letters. October 12, 470. The Diary of Marcus Buscus. This day I have done it. They called me mad. They called me a heretic. But I have done it. I have given Lucilus life. 
turned a marble statue into a soldier with the strength of a hundred men. The Vanguard will never want for troops or slaves again. With nothing but a block of stone and a chisel, we will fashion armies to defeat any specter and quell any turmoil. October 12th, 471 Legat Lucilus, one year ago you were given life. I think it is only fitting that today I shall give you wisdom. You have fought well for the Vanguard, but to follow orders without question, without knowing one's greater purpose, is to be nothing but a mindless slave. I did not make you to be a mindless slave. Today, Lucilus, I will tell you your purpose. You are a guardian of Rome, a warrior in her image standing ready to defend her from that which would threaten her. You are born from the same darkness you battle, but your purpose sets you apart. Make no mistake, Lucilus. You are a man. You may not have a heart beating inside you, but you have a soul nonetheless, and a purpose that drives it. When you fight, the people of Rome fight with you. You are all that stands between Rome and ruin. Do not forget that, Lucilus. Marcus Fuscus September 17, 476 Rome has fallen. The heralds have taken Ravenna. Romulus has been overthrown. I sent Kato to deliver this message as fast as he can, and I can only hope it reaches you before you return from Carthage. Do not come back for me, Lucilus. I will likely be dead by the time you read this, but the Vanguard does not die with me. Run, Lucilus. Turn and run from this place as far and as fast as you can, for the Vanguard goes with you. As long as you are still able to hold a sword, the world will have its guardian. You must never lose hope, Lucilus. You must keep the Vanguard alive. You must be there to stand up to the forces of evil and stare them down. You must fight until the battle is won, because to lose would be to surrender the world. But now you must run. Your father always, Marcus Fuscus. <laughs>